This was Carrie's Bible and it was indestructible. We had one day where we had been out at a soccer, uh, soccer baseball game all day. The hot water heater um, busted up in the third floor, came down through the second floor onto the island where she had been doing her Bible study that morning. Book was open, flooded the entire island except for what seemed like an invisible line around the Bible. Did not touch it, didn't even get splashed on here. So we knew there was something special about this. When the fire happened and the house burned down, there was one thing that we wanted to get out of the house. And we knew that it, it would make it through. And as we were looking through the house, couldn't find it. Went out the back where there was a bunch of stuff piled on the ground. And um, Cole found the Bible. It has all our notes of everything that she did in it. It was just what God was sharing with her. So we knew that this Bible was going to make it through the fire. And we're not surprised that it did. And you know, it doesn't close, but Carrie never closed it anyway. Wonderful God's Word. The last time many of us gathered here today, um, gathered together, and some of you, it was several months ago where we were celebrating your mom's life. In the midst of that time, there's been a rally cry. And when we celebrated your mom's life, we had this idea where we said, I don't know why, but I know why. And it seems like that's kind of held us over at times where when we protested to God about this, it's like, I don't know why, but I know why. We've seen God do so many miraculous things. But today is a little bit different. I do know why today. I know why people get married. There is no mistaking. <laughs> so today's a little bit easier when we think about that. I know why, because something must have happened when you first met each other and you decided that it'd be a good idea to meet each other again. I know something must have happened because you decided to get a ring and propose to Gabby and you said yes to that. I know this about marriage, that you have an opportunity to show people how much Jesus really loves us by the way that you respond to each other. The scriptures tell us at the end of Ephesians 5 that, that actually the gospel message is spoken through a husband and wife, that as a husband takes that Christ-like figure in the home and lovingly serves and is a servant leader to his wife and as his wife responds to that leadership, it's showing forth the gospel message. I have got to watch your mom and your dad and their marriage. And I know this, if y'all will take that model, because there was a gospel love and a covenant love. Here's the thing, never once did any of you kids doubt that mom and dad were gonna be together, that mom and dad loved each other. Now they weren't perfect. I'm sure your dad messed up and your mom never did, <laughs> just like it always is, but I know this, there was no doubts for any boys. No doubts for you down there, Chelsea. No doubts for you guys. So today, y'all have, I know this, y'all have great models. I, Kyle. I, Kyle. Take you, Gabby. Take you, Gabby. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. I, Gabby. I, Gabby. Take you. Take you. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poor. For better, for worse. For better or worse. To cleave unto you. To cleave unto you. And to you only. And to you only. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. With all the loyal love. With all the loyal love. Of my heart I give. Of my heart I give. All my worldly goods. All my worldly goods. With you I share. With you I share. In the name of the Father. The Son, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the presence of God.
God and these assembled witnesses, I pronounce you husband and wife, no longer two, but one in interest and destiny and love and life. How I want both of you guys to remember these words that your mom taught me. God first, no matter what. Spouse second. Children third. That will be hard when your kids come. But if you don't keep each other at the top underneath the Lord, then when those kids move out, you won't have a relationship. So continue to build that relationship even when they come. Hold on to that truth. 